Hello there and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about Dragonflight Season 4 and everything coming in this new season, the final season of Dragonflight. But before we get into all of that guys, I just want to shout out the sponsor of this video and that is Starforge Systems. This video was created on a Starforge Systems PC, the best PCs in the universe. With premium quality and impeccable attention to detail and white glove service at an accessible price point. All Starforge Systems PCs are built by hand in Austin, Texas by experienced builders who are passionate about what they do. Every computer you buy comes with a full two-year parts and labor warranty. Starforge are always releasing limited run builds, so keep an eye out for awesome custom limited run computers. And Starforge are now offering custom cases and plate lights. Whether you want to build the PC yourself or take your Voyager Pro PC to the next level. So special thanks to Starforge Systems for powering and sponsoring this video. So click the link below to find out what they have to offer. And if you are wondering, their logo is a hammer. Right, so yes, Dragonflight Season 4 is fast approaching. It was recently announced that the release date for Dragonflight Season 4 will be April 23rd in the NA region and April 24th in the EU. Of course, Dragonflight Season 3 and the accompanying rewards will not be obtainable as of the start of Season 4, so make sure you're doing that uh, before April 23rd or 24th, depending on your region. Dragonflight Season 4 is, as mentioned, the final season of Dragonflight before we roll into the War Within pre-patch. So this is a season that's kind of a best of, which is going to feature all of the kind of Dragonflight content we've done uh, over the expansion. Now the first kind of major change coming in Season 4 is a change to the difficulty of dungeons, and this is a change that we're going to see continue into the War Within. Now firstly, of course, with a new season is new item levels, so all of the items across the board are going to be dropping around about 39 item levels higher than they are right now. Of course, this is just kind of standard as of a World of Warcraft season. So let's talk about some of the difficulty changes coming in Season 4 and beyond. Uh, I'm going to quote the development notes here because I feel like they just word them the best and kind of explain it the best, of course. So let's begin with normal and follower dungeons. So in season four, they will be dropping item level 460 explorer gear, and this difficulty is actually completely unchanged. So as difficult or easy as a normal dungeon is right now, that will stay exactly the same. Going into Heroic, Heroic will now drop item level 476 Adventurer gear, and the tuning and rewards of this difficulty are increased to be equivalent to baseline Mythic Zeros in the current system. However, Mythic difficulty changes and mechanics will not be present in this difficulty, and this of course remains a queuable experience, however, it's not cross-faction, so, so essentially all of the difficulty and loot of Mythic Zeros is going to now be in Heroic as of Season 4. So going into Mythic Zero dungeons here, Mythic will now drop item level 493 champion gear. Uh, the tuning and rewards of this difficulty are increased to be the equivalent of a plus 10 dungeon with affixes in the current system. Now, there'll be no timers, no affixes, or limitations on changing specializations or talents while in this dungeon. Their goal here with Mythic Zero is to create a mega dungeon-like difficulty for this experience. This difficulty should present a meaningful challenge and provide rewards without the pressure of of the current Mythic Plus system. Uh, Mythic Zero will stay on a weekly lockout, however. So unfortunately, yes, you will still have to use the pre-bay group finder to find these groups, uh, but I think this is a really great change. So with this change is obviously a change to the Mythic Plus system also. So the Mythic Plus system will have rewards up to level 10 with plus two starting from what would regularly be a plus 11 in the current Mythic Plus. So a plus five should be as hard as a plus 15 and a plus 10 should be as hard as a plus 20 in the current system. And affixes will slot in at plus two, five and 10. Dungeon ratings should be equivalent to what they represent in the current system. And there should be a smaller range of keystone levels to find groups for and more meaningful progression between each level. So it's kind of a keystone number squish of sorts, uh, which sounds really great. I'm really interested to see how this actually will work out uh, in season four and beyond. And finally, just to touch upon Dawn of the Infinite. So Dawn of the Infinite hard mode uh, will be available with updated tuning and rewards. Uh, hard mode does not have a timer and the rewards are on the hero track items. And of course, hard mode is intended to be more challenging than a standard mythic difficulty dungeon. So yes, some pretty major changes to the difficulty there across the board for World of Warcraft. I really wish they would make heroic and normal cross-faction. I don't understand why it's not. It's very, very annoying. But yeah, really great changes here. I think this is going to really help a lot of players, just kind of relieving a lot of that pressure uh, of 
the timers and affixes, but also getting the rewards of like a current plus 10, which is really nice to see. So yeah, we'll have to see how it plays out once season four launches uh, on April 23rd. Sticking with dungeons, of course, with a new season is a new dungeon pool for Mythic Plus. To the surprise of absolutely nobody, we have all of the eight original Dragonflight dungeons available for Mythic Plus. This is Algothar Academy, Brackenhide Hollow, Halls of Infusion, Neltheris, the Ruby Life Pools, the Azure Vaults, the Knockhut Offensive, and Alderman Legacy of Tears. So yeah, the eight original Dragonflight dungeons will be available for Mythic Plus. There is a bunch of different tuning changes here to make the dungeons a little bit better. Uh, I think generally speaking people are pretty positive about that but yeah season four will be the original eight dungeons uh, the keystone master mount for this season is the infinite armadon this is going to be the final armadon we have this is just another recolor of that mount of course in the infinite colors which does look pretty cool but yeah never really a big fan of this mount not really sure why uh, they didn't just make you know a dragon riding skin but yes mythic plus season four is going to feature dragonflight dungeons so shifting into raids now, so raids in Season 4 will be called Awakened Raids. This was previously called Fated Raids. This system will work very similar to how we saw with Shadowlands. So what happens is every single week, one of the three Dragonflight Raids will be listed as Awakened. When this raid is Awakened, of course, all of the rewards from this raid uh, will be equivalent to regular Season 4 items. Uh, of course, having that increased item level and difficulty uh, across the board. And this will rotate weekly starting with the Vault Incarnates, going into Abarus, and then of course a Mirdrasil. Now beyond just a regular item level increase, we will also have a new tier set which will drop from all three of the raids. Uh, this will drop a new tier token and can be exchanged with the new appearance and set bonuses which players did vote for. As for legendary items, they will continue to drop as usual from these raids, but players who have previously obtained them can purchase a Scale of Awakening to upgrade their current items to Season 4 item levels at a base of 5 2 and can be upgraded further through Cress and Flightstones. Uh, yeah, Cress and Flightstones uh, still continuing as a system. Uh, of course, just kind of awakened ones, right? Like just another tier of those. As for other rewards from the raid coming in Season 4, we do have some new achievements linked to these awakened raids. So completing all three of the awakened Dragonflight raids on normal will reward you the Voyaging Wildling. So this is actually a new dynamic flying mount and is a recolor of the Ardenwild Flying fox mount not really sure why they went with this mount but it is a dynamic flying mount which is really cool so all you have to do there is complete all three of the raids uh, once they are on awakened difficulty on normal if you complete the raids on heroic however you will get the awakened title so yeah that's pretty cool and also if you complete all three of the awakened dragonflight raids on mythic this will actually give you a teleport to the entrance of each of the raids so yeah, some pretty cool rewards there, of course. Really nice to see. Kind of continuing the fated system we did see in Shadowlands. The Awakened system does actually continue on into outside rewards, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, let's talk about the new Dinar system in Dragonflight Season 4. So in Shadowlands Season 4, there was a new currency called the Puzzling Cartel Dinar. This was used as like a bad luck protection to purchase items uh, from vendors. And in Dragonflight Season 4, they are bringing this back with a new item called the Anti bronze bullion. So I was holding off on recording this part of the video just because we don't have any details on this, uh, but time is getting on and I'm starting to think that we probably won't know anything about this until the launch of season four. But what we do know right now is that it stacks up to 20. Now we don't know if this is per character, we don't know if this is a limit of 20, but we do know it stacks up to 20 times. Uh, what else we know is that it does come from the Mythic Dungeon weekly quest, uh, the quest that pops up every six weeks or so. That's the only sighting we've had of it on the PTR. Any other sources, we aren't really sure. There's no quest been data mined, uh, nothing like that. So perhaps it drops from Dungeon Bosses or Mythic Plus or something like that. But currently we do not know where this item comes from. However, we do know what it can buy. So right now on the PTR in Valdraken, with the bullions, you can purchase rings, trinkets, and weapons from each raid uh, at a cost of two bullions each. Now these are on a new Awakening upgrade track, which goes all the way 
way up to the highest item level of Season 4, so these are very lucrative items. Now, if you've bought all the weapons, trinkets, and rings that you've got, and you've got some antique bullions left over, you can also buy transmogs. So they've added a new vendor which sells weapon transmogs from every difficulty and every raid in Dragonflight for a cost of 1 billion each, which is fantastic. So if you're a transmog collector and you want to grab some of those weapons, you can do that with this currency. Uh, the other item it's selling is the Jigglesworth Senior Mount. This is 3 billions, and this is the mount from Shadowlands Fated. This is the Season 4 Shadowlands Mount. So if you never got that back in Shadowlands, that is now going to be available to you. So... Yeah, little light on the details on the bullion system, but it does look really great to buy transmog weapons and rings and things like that in season four. So moving on into outdoor world content in Dragonflight Season 4. This is something we never saw in the final season of Shadowlands, so it's really nice that this is actually getting an update in Season 4. So firstly, of course, World Quest will be getting an item level upgrade. They'll be dropping Explorer gear, uh, which can be upgraded to item level 476. But the big thing for outdoor world players is that the outdoor world content is also going to be awakened similar to the raids. So a very easy way to know which kind of area is awakened for the week is the new weekly quest. So the weekly quest is getting a huge update and this is going to turn it into the last hurrah quest. Now this rotates every single week depending on which area is awakened or which raid is also awakened. What you'll see is that the zone that is active will be highlighted in the choice of quest. Now this quest does reward a weekly spark and a new cache uh, with champion gear, gold and equipment upgrade materials. So some really good rewards uh, from this weekly quest and the requirement for this weekly quest are no longer getting rep or anything like that it's just simply completing tasks in these zones so for example in the dragon isles one uh, you'll have to complete a hunt the soup and of course the siege because those activities will be awakened so generally speaking on an awakened week the epic rewards from the world events will drop veteran gear at item level 480 and this can be upgraded to item level 502 which is actually really huge now the rotation corresponds as mentioned with the raid week so on the vault of the Incarnates week, uh, the Dragon Isles will be awakened. So the world boss will be awakened. The three original world events of the Dragon Isles will also be awakened. So that's the Siege, the Soup, and the Hunt will also be dropping really high item level gear. During the Zeralak Cavern week or the Aberus week, the world boss in the Zeralak Cavern will be awakened. The Researchers Under Fire event will be awakened. Farak Assaults and Time Rifts will also be dropping higher item level loot. And on the third rotation on the Amidrasil week, of course, the Emerald Dream will be awakened. So you'll have the World Boss dropping higher item level loot. And of course, the Super Bloom will also be rewarding some very good gear. So a pretty interesting take on the outdoor world content there. I kind of like it. It'll be interesting to see how it actually plays out in reality. Uh, but the kind of idea of it rotating, doing different events each week does sound kind of interesting, especially going back to like the soup and things like that. That was always really fun uh, at the start of the expansion. Now, one outlier here is Dream Surges. Now, Dream Surges are also getting an increase, but this is a permanent increase uh, across the board. This is not going to rotate out, uh, at least as of PTR. So Dreambound gear, the kind of Dream Surge Coalescence gear, is going to be now Explorer gear at 460 item level that can be upgraded to 476. So a really nice kind of starting gear there. However, the big thing here for Dream Surges is, of course, the epic loot. So the vendor will now be selling veteran gear at item level 480 which can be upgraded to 502. Now the currency for this is the Dream Surge Cocoon which as of right now is the same currency as of season 3 so if you want to go and start building that up ready for season 4 I highly recommend doing that however PTR be PTRing it might end up changing but we'll see what happens with that. Uh, this is of course a currency you can get once a week through a weekly quest uh, in the Dream Surge zone. This quest has also changed a little bit with the cash of dreams inside this cache of dreams is actually a veteran piece at 480 some gold some equipment upgrade materials and some whelpling crests so dream surges uh, really looking good for outdoor world players in season four as for professions in Season 4, there is a brand new spark, which I did mention earlier. Uh, same system applies. Doesn't seem like there's any like big changes here in regards to the spark. Just an increase of item level across the board for profession items. And finally, of course, with any new season, we have a new PvP season. 
And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay. So in PvP, uh, of course, item levels will be upgraded. Green honor gear will be at a base of 454 and 515 in PvP. Conquest gear will be 493 with 528 in PvP. Uh, World PvP gear will also be getting an upgrade. Uh, the base item level of this will be 457 uh, with it being 512 in PvP. And the epic World PvP gear will also be 463 base with a 5 to 5 item level inside PvP combat. So no kind of revolutionary changes there, just an increase of item levels. As for rewards for PvP, the Vicious Mount this season will be the Vicious Dream Talon, of course coming in an alliance blue color and the Horde Red. I actually really like the look of this mount and I will probably try and get it through Solo Shuffle, but realistically I won't do that. And finally for Gladiators, the Gladiator Mount this season will be the Draconic Gladiators Drake. This is a purple variant of the Drake that we did see in season one. Uh, looks very cool. I believe it was Day of Mine previously. Yeah, just a really awesome looking Gladiator's Drake uh, and the final kind of full transform uh, of Dragonfly. And that's it. That is Dragonfly season four. Uh, not a revolutionary season by any means, but of course we do still have patch 10 to seven, which will contain some new content for you before we get into the War Within pre-patch. Of course, War Within Alpha is coming very soon as well. It's actually listed as before season four uh, on the schedule so yeah we're gonna see that coming up extremely soon but let me know down below what you think of dragonflight season four will you be playing it will you be enjoying it yeah let me know down below i think it's okay but it would have been nice to have something a little bit more revolutionary but you know it's kind of cool that we still have 1027 coming up so hopefully 1027 is a banger but we'll have to see but guys thank you very much for watching if you like this video please do leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if you want to support me outside of youtube more so on patreon and i've got twitter and mr gmyt and i have a partner discord channel as well and as mentioned i am streaming on twitch.tv slash mr gm if you want to see me stream what a warcraft dragonflight dragonflight ptr uh war within alpha and more i'm over on twitch.tv slash mr gm every single day and with that guys i'll see you next time